Robin Parker, the director mm. of Australians for Indigenous Constitutional Recognition, is on the record as saying there will need to be more significant funding. So, Daniel, on this issue, the money tree keeps growing. It does. It keeps growing from government and also from big corporates who, as I say, yep. are using their significant and formidable resources to provide uh, funding for the Yes uh, campaign. And what this shows to me, though, is they're not confident. The Yes campaign is not no, 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 confident no. that their position resonates with Australians. That's why they need to engage in this one-sided funding and also the censorship of the No case, because when we look into the detail, we know that Australians are fair-minded, tolerant and egalitarian and they do not want to have a race-based body in Parliament. And I think that's a key reason why the government is seeking to stack the deck with all of this funding. Yep. And that's also why, as you noted, Alan, Albanese hasn't been out there with the details mm. because he knows once Australians understand what the voice actually means, they're not going to back it. Why should people vote no? Well, I would never tell people how to vote, Alan, but what I would say is that the voice to Parliament will divide us by race permanently. Uh, having a separate body inserted in our constitution to be in the parliament will permanently divide Australians by race because it means one group of Australians, based on their race, will essentially have extra political and legal rights compared to every other Australian. And it will have effective power, effective veto power over every single major piece of legislation for the simple reason that every single piece of legislation affects all Australians including Indigenous Australians. So it'll divide us by race and separate us forever. While I've got you here, Senator Lydia Thorpe, who has a lot to say about all of this, but has had a dalliance with a rebels bikey gang leader, what should happen to her? Well, I think she needs to step aside and uh, consider her future in Parliament. I mean, this is deeply concerning. And the point here, Alan, is the Greens are always the first to talk about integrity, talk about accountability, to talk about transparency. They want that for everybody else. But Adam Band had to be dragged kicking and screaming to demote Lydia Thorpe, who was the uh, deputy leader of the Greens in the Senate. And it goes to the hypocrisy of the Greens. And imagine you had done this, or yes. I had done this, yes. or someone on the centre right yeah. had done something yes. like this in politics. They would be all over it demanding her resignation, as they should be. Uh, yet Adam Banner, the Greens, are circling the wagons behind her. And I think it goes to everything that's troubling and wrong uh, about the Greens. Absolutely. And look, we've just had a budget this week. Just a couple of questions before you go. We are meant to be facing unconscionable levels of debt, but some outfits seem to have no problem getting money. I'd just be interested in your view. Should a family who are earning $530,000, parents, combined income, five, I'll say it again, $530,000, should they qualify for a 90% deduction on childcare costs for their first child? No, they shouldn't, Alan. And at a minimum, these kind of policies should be means tested. But I also think when it comes to childcare, this disproportionately benefits fairly well-off professional yes. women yes. who are in, say, the yes. legal profession or something like that. And good on them, good on them for doing well in their life and their family life, nothing wrong with that. No. But when you actually look at what middle class and working class uh, mothers want, they want to have the flexibility. Some of them want to go to work, some of them want to work a few days a week, some of them want to stay home with their children. But current policy mm. encourages you to put all your kids in childcare. Mm. I think we're much better off just giving a cash payment mm. and saying, look, you can use this cash payment to go to childcare if you want, or you can stay at home to supplement your, your household income. Mm. So my concern is that this is a, a preference of a small minority of well-off individuals a in our community and, and, and doesn't take into account the circumstances of working class Australians. And, and, and mothers watching us tonight who have decided, made their own choice, to stay at home to look after their children, they are forgotten at the end of the day.